Well, salutations, kindred spirits. Welcome to another magic history lesson. Today we're talking about the OG close-up kind of guy. I'm talking about Paul Harris. Yeah, Paul Harris, one of my childhood idols, one of my all-time inspirations. And uh, I wanted to open this video with the, the trick that inspired me to learn Paul's magic. But after four hours of trying to capture this thing on video, yeah, it's been a while since I've done it, I decided that maybe I could leave it in the hands of the magician that I saw who inspired me to learn Paul's magic. And with that, we're gonna take a look at David Copperfield. Yeah, the GOAT, the OG GOAT, David Copperfield, performing Paul's Immaculate Connection on one of his TV specials from the mid 80s. So let's take a time travel back and take a look. Here's David Copperfield doing Paul Harris stuff. You've all heard of marked cards, yes? Mm -hmm. That's where you can tell one card from the other by little markings on the back. Well, those cards aren't marked, are they? No, nope. no, they look uh, perfectly, and they are perfectly normal. But I'm going to show you the newest methods of marking cards. We'll be able to tell these three cards from the rest of the deck by the newest methods of marking cards. The first method is called the gambler's crimp. It's a method of putting a little tiny bend in the back of the cards. Here we go. The gambler's crimp. Almost impossible to see. <laughs> And of course, you need special glasses to see this bend. <laughs> Believe me, there's a bend in the card. The next method is called the invisible notch. It's a method of putting a little tiny notch in these cards. Here we go, the invisible notch. Almost impossible to see. <laughs> now, if you read Braille, you can feel the difference. These cards. Here we go. The final method is called the Las Vegas link. It's a method of marking two cards with one by invisibly linking it on the other two. It looks something like this. unlink them by making a wish and blowing them. One more time, just for fun. Uh -oh. Or you can unlink them by ripping them. Just like that. Or go back in time in 10 seconds. So wow, not bad for a card trick. Three ungimmick cards linked together, torn and restored and given away. That is Paul Harris's immaculate connection. Uh, wow, this, this trick for me was like a perfect storm. I, I was living in Dothan, Alabama at the time, and for some reason a guy decided to open a magic shop. This was a small town, couldn't support a shop, but boy, it was a blessing for me to have it there. And it was uh, shortly after this David Copperfield special where I saw that card trick that I walked into this magic shop, and there on the shelf was Paul's Stars of Magic manuscript, The Immaculate Connection. So uh, I made that purchase. It was a $10 manuscript just for paper. That was a pretty hefty purchase for a teenager in the 80s. And I had bags of cards filled with uh, torn cards that had been linked together. And apparently I need to fill some more bags to do that trick again. And on that note, hey, I'm sure this Paul Harris series will see a part two. There's simply too much uh, Paul Harris stuff to get to. Uh, a note on that, if you're interested in Paul's material, this is what I would probably direct uh, any a student to. This is his Art of Astonishment series. It's a three volume set that compromises his life's work and uh, everything is updated. There's magic from his friends. We're going to do some of that actually in just a minute. And uh, you know, you can do it like I did and read every single one of those Paul Harris books. You know, I started with Super Magic, The Magic of Paul Harris, Mentor's Book, Close Up Kind of Guy, Las Vegas Magic. They're all good, but this is a great option. Uh, it's just very highly recommended. 
also highly recommended. I just added this to uh, conjure.com, my, uh, my site where I, you know, beginners stuff, I teach it, I sell some magic, and we added our first download this week. It's a Paul Harris uh, download. It's his first three Stars of Magic videotapes. There's over 30 routines on these tapes. It's like a beautiful time capsule of the best magic, uh, of Paul's best magic from the early 80s. So go check that out. Uh, one of the tricks on there is uh, J.C. Wagner's uh, Twisted Collectors. Actually, I don't. I'm not sure that that's on there. I might be lying to you. It's irrelevant because we're gonna we're gonna learn it today. Uh, I know one of the tricks that is on there is uh, Paul's Fantasy Aces. This is a production that he created with Daryl. I think this was from Close Up Fantasies. And it's a fun way to produce the four aces. Not the subject that we're discussing here, but hey, it's in the books, it's on the videos, and that's a fun one to look at. The trick I wanna talk about uses a couple selected cards. I'm just gonna use the two jokers for the selections. Note, it's probably best for this trick if the you've had the jokers in play already. So something, something like my double play trick. Maybe I'll leave a link to the double play tutorial there. And uh, you can do a trick like that, and then the cards that are selected go back into the deck and are lost without a trace. Then perhaps you introduce the four aces to do this piece of magic. Uh, I digress, let me do what I'm doing here. The four aces, here's what happens. We'll do the basic warm up trick. They start face down, it's not the shake, it's the spin that makes the magic happen. It's the twist that turns the aces face up one at a time. That's the ace of diamonds. Another twist, the ace of diamonds turns face down, the ace of hearts turns face up. Is this real life? Yeah, this is really happening. This is real time, no CGI. That's the ace of clubs where the ace of hearts and diamonds was. And last but not least, the big daddy, the ace of spades. I'm just gonna leave that one face up. Watch, it'll start to influence the other aces to turn face up with it. That's one, that's number two, that's number three, and look, that's all four face up aces. Hang on, hang on, no, the fun's just begun. Not only do they turn from face down to face up, they also have the power to find, to find selected cards. There they are, appearing out of nowhere, the two selections from before, that's Joker one, Joker two, that is the Twisted Collectors. Twisted Collectors, a lot going on there. Uh, first, the credits. This was in Paul's book, Super Magic, credited to J.C. Wagner and Alan Ackerman. The trick is published in Super Magic, uses three selections. That's fine, it works much the same. But to make this work, you really only need two selections, and in my opinion, it makes it a little more manageable. But you can compare the two and make your choices. Uh, the uh, let's, let's talk about the control first. You need to... We're gonna discuss everything, but you need to have two selections controlled to the top. Uh, note, I learned this from Paul's book, it's a Marlowe control, and on that note, Paul's material was a great uh, access to Marlowe's material without having to read Marlowe, which can be challenging. Uh, don't get me wrong, I recommend Marlowe, uh, but later in life, and reading material like Paul's fun uh, reads makes this kind of material a lot more accessible. Uh, TMI, but that's that. And here's the simple shift. Two cards, the selections are placed into the pack uh, in the lower half and left out jogged. Show them in different parts. Uh, the forefinger goes at the end of this dealing grip situation with the out jog cards. What happens for the control is you give a light wrist shake and the cards above the uppermost joker will slide forward. Then you can pinch these at the inner end strip them out, put them on top, and that'll leave the two jokers on top of the deck. So do it how you want, but this is a great way to do it. Two cards, face up, shift, and boom. So your selections are here. You've already introduced the aces. Maybe you've done fantasy aces. And oh, you wanna get a break under the, you wanna get a break under the selections. I advocate the pinky count, so I'll just pinky count two. If you don't know what that is, you can take a look back at my last uh, weekly lesson. We discussed that. I'll leave a link here. Go check out the, the lesson on the pinky break and the pinky count. And uh, like I said before, if these are already used, there's no heat on the selections. You've done a trick with them, you put them back, and now you're gonna focus your magic on the aces. As you take the aces face up onto the deck, 
grab everything above that pinky count. So we're gonna lift six cards off the top of the deck and then you can set the rest of the deck aside. You're not gonna need it. Uh, peel the cards one at a time from one, uh, from Biddle Grip. You hold, this is Biddle Grip. Ends, thumb at one end, fingers at the other. You peel with your thumb uh, from uh, right to left. And the last card, which is a block of three, the face down selections and the ace, keep your fingertips to cover that and just put it on top. Now we're gonna turn the packet face down and do an Elmsley count. An Elmsley count, which is another lesson. See how we're building here? Things connect the dots, we're getting there. Pretty soon we're gonna be doing mind blowing stuff, but you get better every week. Elmsley count lesson, it's up there. You can check out the Elmsley count. So to show four face down cards, that's one, the block push off, and then three, and then four. That leaves us in this condition. We're gonna reverse everything now as the effect starts. You say, look, with a twist, and as you say this, we're doing the die Vernon through the fist flourish. Turn the hand over at the wrist, just rotate it. Your thumb pushes the packet out the other end of the hand, and that will reverse the packet so the aces are face up. I follow that up with a quick spin of the packet as I introduce the twisting premise. After that's done, we just do a bunch of Elmsley counts with a little displacement, and that looks something like this. Elmsley count to show the first ace face up. Leave this ace out jogged as you complete the count, placing this card stepped in jogged, but not all the way to the bottom card. So it's like a triple step, and here's why. As you push this ace flush, we're going to pinch this card and pull it back and place it on top. This is a Sam Schwartz, oh, Howie Schwartzman, I think, or one of the two, one of the Schwartz's uh, backflip routine from uh, Carl Fulves epilogue. This is a great sequence for twisting. You just repeat it again. So Elmsley count, one, block, three, four. That shows a different ace. Leave it out jogged. Pinch this card as you square the ace, put it on the top and then another twist and another Elmsley count. That'll show the third ace. Same thing, out jog step, pinch and place on top, and then one last spin, and that will show the last ace. Now I leave the last ace face up on the top of the packet as we segue to all four aces turning face up. You see if I just give a shake, there's our biddle grip ready to pull the second card out. It goes on the face of the packet, rotate at the wrist to show another card reversed, and now we do an Escanio spread. A what? An Escanio spread. We're learning the new move here. This is uh, a way to conceal that block while showing all the cards face up. And that happens like this. The packet is held in biddle grip. Your forefinger pulls the lowermost card to the left. Your second finger contacts the card above it and pulls it to the left. I got out of order here, hold on, there we go. Your, your first finger pulls the lowest, mo lowest most card to the left. Second finger, second most card to the left. The thumb goes on top and holds down the top card, and then the right hand holds its block. That's the three is one. And done fluently, it'll look like this. Now, I advocate this follow-up, which is this. After you've done the spread, take that block and move it inward. In jog it, and then use your pinky to clamp it against your thumb base. What that means is you can take out the two lowermost aces and freely show the cards like this. It's a great Escanio handling to follow up that basic Escanio spread, makes it look very clean. One last step, as you reverse count the packet, we're going to interlace those selections to make them appear. We begin doing that by obtaining a break underneath the lowermost card. Just a little pinky pull down and you can get a break under that thing. And note, that'll be done after the Escanio spread. So you're in this condition, as you square up the packet, get that little finger break underneath the lowermost selection. Peel the top card as you show the aces face up one more time. As you peel the second card, leave the selection and peel that first ace secretly on top of it, secretly. And then uh, one more reverse count. I like to sidestep this one just a little bit. Shows the four aces face up. As you wiggle them, slowly spread them to show the two cards appearing between them. And that will be your big finale moment, the selections appearing out of nowhere. That is my handling of the Twisted Collectors. Now, that's uh, one of, well, I've done a couple tricks this week. I'm, it's actually Paul Harris week for me. Yesterday on the shorts, I did Paul, uh, the vacuum cleaner card, vacuum, Paul's vacuum cleaner cards. Today I shot PDQ. That was a, it's a, 
fun one to return to, Coins Across. Paul's Coins Across is very direct. Heck, you can look at the short, check that out, and maybe tune in tomorrow. That's actually the trick I'm going to discuss in our weekly lesson, the uh, Paul Harris Coins Across. I think it's just invaluable for uh, a student, just not just to know and have in the repertoire, but to learn and grow as a coin magician. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. That'll complete our video today. Uh, if you have any favorite Paul Harris tricks or uh, questions or comments, please drop a little line in the comments. That helps, helps the algorithm. That helps me uh, find you and that helps everybody. So that'll do it for today. I always thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention and your energy. And I'll see you on the next video. Ciao for now.